In the course of a career spanning two decades, filmmaker Judy Naidu has ample experience of opportunities that seem to pop up quite randomly and then making the most of them. She's learned how to harness the power of coincidence and I met up with her to find out how she's done it. Being an independent filmmaker in South Africa is definitely not the easiest career that Judy Naidu could have chosen, but she's achieved the magic milestone of completing her first feature. One of my favorite things in the entire world is picking the brains of amazing female storytellers. Judy Naidu is one of these storytellers and I cannot wait to get her inside story. Judy Naidu, you beauty. Hi, Zachy. <laughs> You're just in time to watch the trailer. Oh, I can't wait. We definitely need popcorn for this. The city is a gutter and I know what washes through it. Guilty or not, I'm a lawyer. I'm your lawyer. Death is just a permanent out-of-body experience. I know exactly what I will be doing this weekend, and that is watching Hatchet Hour. What got you interested in making movies? I've always had an interest in telling stories and, and being an entertainer. And there was just this magnetic pull towards this industry. How did you go about becoming a filmmaker? I have a dramatic arts degree from BITS. It was a predominantly theatre course. But while I was there, I actually discovered cinema. When I was introduced to old school cinema, like French New Wave and Italian realism, that kind of cinema really turned me on. As a filmmaker, you're also an artist, but being an artist doesn't always pay the bills. How do you pay the bills? It's a challenging life to be an artist, firstly, and you do it because it serves some other purpose in you. It fulfills you in some way. Judy, what are some of the challenges you faced in developing your career and talent? I entered the industry around 1994, and we were just a new democracy right then. But the industry hadn't changed significantly. And here was this like brown chick walking in with a showreel saying, give me this opportunity to direct. And nobody would give me the chance. But they did say, ah, she must be good with numbers. So let's make her a production manager. And I ended up going the long route to this path. I, I became a production assistant, a production manager, went into producing, then got my master's in producing. It enabled me to create opportunities for myself. So now I can put together financing and I can write my own material and then I can direct it, which is the passion part of it. Erica Vessels plays Belle, an ambitious lawyer who has everything going her way until she accidentally kills an acquaintance. She's determined to save her career and lifestyle, but her attempts at a cover-up eventually entangle her best friend and the bestie's oddball boyfriend. Hatchet Hour has earned critical acclaim. How did you come to take up this project? A very good friend had written the script, Hatchet Hour, like many years ago. She was moving from the country and she said, listen, if you rescue the script from like this really ancient computer, you can have the rights to it and you can make the film. And that's what I did. I, I rescued the script. It became my adopted child <laughs> and I basically nurtured it. Rewrote it to a large extent because I loved the premise of it. Because firstly, it offered like this really engaging story, but two engaging female roles. What do you love about being a filmmaker? Firstly, creating the stories from the initial concept stage when that idea is born and when you start to feel that magic that there's something in this idea that it's going to grow and when you see this thing becoming real because you really never think you're going to get to that point and then you see the completed film such a sense of accomplishment how important do you think female driven movies are and female upliftment is in the industry we have to change the perspective of how people see female directors. I'd love for one day for people to say she's a director, not she's a female director, or, you know, because men never get that. He's always just the director. And the only way that would happen is if women do it themselves. What is next for Judy Naidu? My second feature, Kings of Mulberry Street. Should we go and have a coffee and talk about that? I'd love to. The plot of Kings of Mulberry Street takes Judy back to her roots in KwaZulu Natal. She's keen to showcase local talent, and this will be a great opportunity for young actors to work with an award winning writer, director, and producer. Judy, what is the Kings of Mulberry Street about? The film's an homage to the 80s and to Bollywood. Because when I was growing up, we lived on Groom Street in an old railway house. 
And right next door was a music store. Every Saturday, they would play like the latest Bollywood music. So there was no chance of sleeping in late. It almost was like the soundtrack to my childhood, all of these Bollywood tunes. So that has somehow found its way into my film. It's a story about two nine-year-old boys from different sides of the track who forge an amazing friendship and decide to bring down a shared enemy. Your leads are two little boys. Yes, it's a, a first for the Indian community. We've never had two nine-year-old kids in the lead role in a feature film. What lessons have you learned as a filmmaker and an individual? I should trust my instincts. Also to surround myself with talented people who share the vision. What advice do you have for aspiring female filmmakers out there? You must have a voice, your own voice. Don't be afraid to just express yourself. Judy, thank you so much for letting me pick your brain. You are inspiring. Hatchet Hour doesn't have major international stars, but the scripts, acting and execution give it bite and punch. And Judy seems set to make her mark on the indie movie scene.